Welcome everybody, I'm Coach PJ. Today I'm gonna to take you through the stress response to training. I talk about this topic a lot on two different ends of the spectrum. We have people who don't stress themselves hard enough and therefore they don't create any adaptation from their training. Or in the world I work in a lot with athletes and fighters, we have people who stress their body way too much and they don't understand the recovery that's necessary in order to get the adaptations that we're looking for. So I'm gonna break down how our bodies respond to different types of stress, and that'll help you to structure your training programs so you can apply enough stress and enough recovery to get the adaptations that you're looking for. So when it comes to stress, there's two different types of stress. There's distress, which is the bad stress that we typically think about when we think about stress. Most people think stress is bad and I should try to avoid stress at all costs. But there's also eustress, and eustress is actually something that's beneficial to our body. Our body is designed to adapt to stress. So if we completely avoid stress altogether, then we remove our body's ability to adapt and that's one of the best abilities that we have. So anything that we do, when we apply a specific type of stress, our body can then respond and adapt, and I'm gonna break down that process right now. But our body doesn't know the difference between stress, so whether that's work stress, relationship stress, workout stress, uh, mental stress from learning or studying, all of these different types of stress affect our body the same way. So we need to manage all of these different components of stress, and we need to understand the recovery process so that we can apply the right amount of stress at the right time. My job as a performance coach is to figure out exactly what type of stress I need to apply, how much I need to apply, and then apply the right recovery strategy to make sure that my athletes can adapt to that stress and to get better. So I'm gonna break down what that looks like, and we'll use working out as an example. So this baseline right here is homeostasis. That's my baseline, that's where my body wants to stay. My body does not wanna deviate above or below that line. Here is my stressor. So let's say this would be my workout. <clears throat> when I apply this stress, if whether I'm running miles or I'm lifting weights, whatever that is, whatever type of workout I'm doing, that's gonna apply a specific stress to my body. And that's gonna cue this downward slope, which is gonna be my alarm phase. This is when my body's saying, what the hell just happened? You're breaking down my tissues. I don't understand what's going on right now. And it's pulling me out of my baseline. So if I apply the right amount of stress, once my body gets that initial response, then it's gonna to start to bring all of the hormones and it's gonna to start to bring everything that's necessary to repair all of that damage. So then that's called the resistance phase and that's when recovery starts to happen. So this is as my body starts to build new muscle or increased cardiovascular adaptations. Again, whatever the type of stress that I'm applying, the body's gonna respond in order to recover and get back to my baseline. But because my body doesn't like to be pushed off of that homeostasis, it's gonna say, hey, we didn't like what happened here. So I need to send more stuff, we need to build back stronger so that the next time I have that type of stress, I don't get dropped way back down again. So that's where we start to build back up and that's where super compensation happens. So the super compensation is where I'm getting stronger or I'm getting a benefit from that stress, some sort of adaptation. Now, once that super compensation happens because it's sending more resources than are necessary to build back, so we build back stronger, if I continue to drive into that stress, eventually we're gonna exhaust all of those resources and we're gonna hit into exhaustion phase. And this is where injuries, overtraining, fatigue, illness, all of those things occur, overreaching and overtraining, because my body has sent everything it possibly can in order to build back, but now we're all out and I'm still, I'm still having too much stress, so I'm not able to respond and build back. So again, for athletes or for anybody, a lot of people, if I just go to the gym every day and I grab 10 pound dumbbells and I do three sets of 10 of, every sing, of the same exercise, and I do that circuit three days a week for the next two years, pretty soon I'm gonna have super compensated and that's not gonna really be applying stress anymore. My body can handle that. 
So this is what happens. A lot of people, uh, a lot of females that I've worked with, they don't want to lift heavy weights and they just want to tone their muscles. And all they do is grab a weight that they could possibly do for, for 30 reps and they do it for 10. And again, that's not applying any stress. Without stress, there's no adaptation. So we have to choose something that's going to actually tax the body and apply that stress. On the other end of that spectrum, many of the fighters that I work with, they don't understand that this is a necessary component of getting better. We don't get better from the stress we apply. We get better when we recover and super compensate to that stress. So if we don't apply the right recovery, and all we do is go into the gym twice a day and train really, really hard, and then the next day try to do it again, the next day try to do it again, we end up in this exhaustion phase, and that's where performance will actually decrease. For some reason, athletes think that they're Superman and their body doesn't have, doesn't respond this way. But this is physiology. This is how our body adapts to stress. So one of the biggest things I do with my athletes is apply the right type of recovery and get them to understand that it's okay to not go all out 100% during every session because we need to allow that super compensation to happen. Then once we super compensate, now my new baseline is up here. And then I'm going to apply more stress to drop it back down and super compensate. And over time, if we look at a long-term development model, that's how we progressively get better over time. When people try to apply way too much stress at the beginning, they drop way down. They never get back up to that recovery. They end up going down, down, down. Performance starts to decrease. Injuries happen. Then their baseline lowers way back down here because now they haven't been able to train. They become untrained. And we have to start that process over again. And they do that over and over. So if you look at a year or a four year type model, their performance starting from a baseline here goes up and back down and plateau and back down. And that from the beginning to four years later, they're only up a little bit. Whereas if we slowly progressively move up, four years from now, we end up way up here. And we didn't have as many plateaus and, and uh, valleys in that cycle. So <clears throat> generally speaking, this is how our body responds to stress. So it's really important that we are choosing stress wisely. You need to be stressing your body. Stress is a good thing. There's a phenomenon called hormesis, which is basically how our body adapts. If we take a small dose of something that at a high dose would be lethal. So let's say heat stress or exercise, for example. A small dose of exercise provides this stress response and then my body recovers and super compensates and I actually develop some, I, I develop uh, resilience against that type of stressor. And that might be something, again, if I went and applied a maximum amount of that stress, it would kill me. So that's what hormesis is. And, and um, we need to be applying that type of stress throughout in various amounts, lots of different types of stress at different times. If you're somebody who's accustomed to the same type of workout program and all you do is lift weights, you're probably not stressing your systems enough to create adaptation and your prop that bucket is probably full, but you're lacking a lot of other areas where we can still apply stress and get an adaptation. If you're on the other end of that spectrum and you're applying way too much stress all the time, then you need to focus on your recovery and understand that the end goal is not to work out. The end goal is not just to push hard. The end goal is to get better and improve your performance in whatever the desired task. So you need to be applying the right amount of recovery at the right time so that we can, can progressively get better over time and we don't end up in this exhaustion phase where overtraining, illness, injury, and performance decrease happen. So that's how our body responds to stress. I hope this video was helpful for you. Remember to get out there, apply some stress to your body every single day, and then apply the right recovery strategy so that you can continue to get better. Remember that without stress, there's no adaptation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share this one out with your friends. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my Facebook page. Until next time, I'm Coach PJ, Raising the Bar.